bénissant ton Saint-Nom. Glorifiant ton nom. Nous élevons ton nom. Nous adorons ta majesté. Nous bénissons ton nom. Dieu de merveille, bénissant ton nom, nous élevons ton nom, nous adorons ta majesté. that you will guide us and lead us even now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So the word of the Lord today that he has provided is becoming imitator of God. That comes from the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and we're going to read from verse 1 to 21. Without you, can you please take for us the book of Ephesians, chapter 5. I'm going to read from verse 1 all the way to 21. Ephesians chapter 5, starting from verse 1. Mm -hmm. Be ye therefore followers of God. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. As dear children. Verse 2, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. And hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. And has Sa given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Verse 3. But fornication. But fornication and, and all uncleanness uh -huh. or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh 
saints. Alleluia. By fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Verse 4. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting which are not convenient but rather giving of thanks neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting which are not convenient but rather giving of thanks for this he know that no warmonger for this you know that no warmonger no unclean person. No unclean person. No covetous man. No covetous man. Who is an idolater? Who is an idolater? Hath any inheritance? Hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ, in the kingdom of Christ and of, God. and of God? Let no man deceive you. With Let vain no words. man deceive you with vain words. With vain words. For because of these things. For because of these things. Commit the wrath. Of God, come at the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Upon the children of disobedience. Verse 7. Be, be not ye therefore partakers with them. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For he were sometimes darkness. For ye were sometimes darkness. But now are ye light in the Lord. But now are ye light in in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Walk as children of light. Verse 9. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. But rather reprove them. But rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith. Wherefore you uh, wherefore he saith. Awake thou that sleepest. Awake thou that sleepest. And arise from the dead. And arise from the dead. And Christ shall give thee and light. And Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly. See then that ye walk circumspectly. Not as fools. Not as fools. But as wise. But as wise. Redeeming the time. Redeeming the time. Because the days are evil. Because the days are evil. Wherefore. Be ye not unwise. Ye, wherefore be ye not unwise. But understanding what the will of the Lord is. But understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine. And be not drunk with wine. Wherein is excess. Wherein is the excess. But be filled with the Spirit. But be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in spirit. In psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving all, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Of God. Hallelujah. Amen. This word says... Follower of God. In other version, it says, imitator of God. 
The word of God tells us that let the same mind that is in Christ be also in you. Well, when we talk about the mind of Christ or being imitator of God, what are we talking about? Because we cannot imitate God in the proper sense of imitate him because we're not God. Amen. But what are we talking about imitating God? Well, the word of God gives us some clue. Let's go back in verse 1. And I want you to give me in the Amplify, please. So chapter 1, sorry, chapter 5 of Ephesians, we read from verse 1. Therefore, Therefore, becoming imitators, imitators of, God, of God, copy him, copy him, and follow his, and follow his example, example as well beloved children. As well beloved children, imitate their father. Hmm. See, in a family that is sound, well, not necessarily only a sound family, because even in a bad families. A child can imitate the father if a father is cursing out every time. Are you what I'm saying? I do remember I saw some children as little as a two, three years old cursing out at everybody in the store because that's where they learned it from. You see what I'm saying? So, but my point is, as children, the word of God says, imitate the father. So we ought to imitate our father. But to imitate him is a way that the Lord gives us in the word. Why do we need to imitate God? Why do we need to have the same mind that is Christ be also in us? Well, isn't, isn't, isn't sufficient for us to just know the Lord and to confess his name? Well, no. Why? Because there is an imitation that we are called to do. Becoming imitator of God, the Bible calls us saints. Amen. It's not like uh, some other churches that we tell you that uh, they are the one to canonize you saint. No, that's not true. Hallelujah. You are made saint by the word, by the blood, hallelujah, of Christ Jesus. Because the Bible calls the saints. Amen. Not the one who was... Because you see, when you realize that you are saint, there are things you don't do. Are you what I'm saying? But if you have to die first, and then some people will go to canonize you to become sin, what's the need of it? The word of God calls those who walk in Christ becoming imitator of him, saints. Hallelujah. Let's go back. Verse 1 says, Therefore, become imitators of God, copy him, and follow his example as well-beloved children imitate the father this verse only tells me that a person who does not imitate the ways of the lord is not a well-beloved child meaning he does not have a relationship with christ it's as simple as that because as i said if you are in the house with somebody you're gonna imitate the person when the person is your father are, are you are you what i'm saying if a person has a child but the child is somewhere there, the person will not have, or the child will not imitate that person, even if the person is a biological father. Imitation comes from what you see. Hallelujah. So, the word of God reminds us again that it is impossible to please God outside of his word. We cannot. We cannot please the Lord Jesus just by mere thought or good thinking or ransom, ran, uh, random behavior. No, we can only please him by his word. For this reason, it says, if you love me, do what? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. If you love me, there is a condition that 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 suffice to the love that we have for Christ. Have you ever said in your life, "I love Jesus"? But as you say, "I love you, Lord," on which basis you saying it? 
If it is in the basis of the feeling that you have, and the conviction you have, well, let me know you, and uh, let me know you are wrong. Because he tells us what is the definition of loving him. Amen. So if we are imitator of him, then we will willfully, willingly, knowingly say, Lord, this is what you tell me to do. Therefore, I'm going to imitate it. That's how we love Christ. Hallelujah. Verse 2, and walk continually in love. love. That is, value one another, practice empathy and compassion unselfishly being the best for others. So value one another. Practice empathy and compassion. Unselfishly seeking the best for others. Just as Christ also loved you, you and, and gave himself up for us mm -hmm. an offering and sacrifice to God mm -hmm. slain for you so that <laughs> it became a sweet fragrance. Do you realize what the word of God says? He's not saying love one another when the person is lovable. Hallelujah. Because he said as Christ also loved us. When did he love us? He did not love us when we were lovable. He loved us when we were still sinners. So if somebody getting you some headache and then you think, I cannot love that person, then you are not an imitator of Because it would be easy to love the people who get not under your skin. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because some people, they, they can make their way under your skin. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They just navigate right there. They're like ticks. Phew, <laughs> under your skin. <laughs> but listen, if you love those who... Go along, if you love only those who go along with you, the Bible calls you what? A Pharisee. Because he says, if your love does not what? Ah. Exceed and surpass. Because the Pharisee only loves his own. His own who can give him good stuff. So when the Pharisee sees his brother, hey brother, how you doing? Yeah, how much you had today? <laughs> they, they can communicate and they can relate on exchange. But when you see somebody that is outside of your likeness, you know, let me tell you something. When I go outside and I see a lady naked, when I say naked is the word because they're naked. Are they not? Some of them, if they wear something, their entire body is still out. When I see a boy naked, the guy walks, the paint is over here in the knees. You have the impression that uh, his uh, waist has relocated. <laughs> On the knees. <laughs> so you, you don't know whether he's being bound. or You don't know because, you know, thief or not thief, um, um, prisoner, when they are being transferred from one place to another, if they are dangerous prisoners, they put chains on the um, ankle, on the legs. So they can only, only lock this way. So when you see a guy who is spent and his belt is over here, the guy walks this way. You, <laughs> hallelujah. Let, let it there. Anyway. So when you see such like that, your first 
your first uh, can you can you give me the program on the thing so I can see your your first thank you your first interaction or impression is look at him look at her but it is easy for us to do so why because we were also once the bible says into the wrong behavior so it is easy to see the wrong and to dislike it however you cannot dislike the wrong so much to dislike the person listen nowadays they are pressuring some people in Africa, president in Africa, countries in Africa, because I believe there are about 30 countries in Africa who do not tolerate and condone with seeing uh, um, homosexuality. As I've been talking as of today, the United States of America is pressuring the, uh, uh, Kamala Harris. She's doing all kind of round in Africa to pressure the president to sign law to include the homosexual. And then those who refuse to do so, they are cutting off all the money that comes there. Now, when I look at it, I can automatically look at them as evildoer because that's what that is. And now I see a person standing on the White House, which is the press, how I call that? Press secretary speaking, saying, to those people in Africa who refuse to condone such abomination, telling them they are wrong. And I'm thinking, how can a wrong person tell to somebody he's wrong? <laughs> how, how, how can a madman tell to his brother, you mad? <laughs> it doesn't work. You, 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 got, you got to be sound in order to tell to somebody you are not sound. So when I see that, it's easy for me to just look at her and say, are you yourself, you, you out of your mind. How, how can you even tell anybody anything? It's easy. But how can I love her? How can I pray for her even as, because as you see them doing so, the first thing that comes in your mind is you are indignated. Are you what I'm saying? In indignation. You reprove it because the Bible calls us to reprove those things. But the end of it is a thought of, Lord, let light come. Change her heart. Transform her life. Because after all, they are also blinded by the world and the God of this world. Imagine whenever you were sinners and then you were doing something wrong. And then people were cursing you out because of your actions. I know what I'm saying? There was at least somebody who prayed for you even though you were wrong. And that person I know is called Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He prayed for us even when we were in the wrong path. Dead. So for me, loving Christ, it has now to become a practice of compassion. Why practice? Because it does not come naturally. So I have to exercise it. I have to make myself, push myself, subdue my flesh to say, no, today I will have compassion on this person, on that person. Why? Because it does not come naturally. But as you practice it, it becomes a second nature. You can rebuke somebody in love. How? Like the Lord Jesus did. Amen? When he rebuked the Pharisee, he did rebuke them. Amen? And he didn't rebuke them, uh, I would call it, softly. Sometimes he been on them really bad. But none of his thoughts were towards heel thinking. Are you know what I'm saying? So our practice is how do we become imitator of God? When God sends judgment and wrath upon the children of disobedience, he's not doing it in a heel intent. He's doing it 
out of love. The word of God reminds us that the, the father chastises or corrects the child that he loves. So becoming imitator of God for us is to practice loving one another intentionally. Because if you wait for the Holy Ghost to seize you to love the person, man, you will wait until the Lord Jesus returns. <laughs> it cannot happen. It cannot happen. We have to practice it. We have to subdue to it. We have to make, we have, remember, if the Lord Jesus were waiting for a letter from sinners, Jesus Christ, uh, if he was waiting for a letter for the sinner to tell Lord Jesus, come die, I can tell you, up to this very day, we will still be bound to hell. So love, the Bible says, surpasses all things. Lost does not. Feeling cannot. Emotion fails. But Christ's love surpasses all things. Rebuking somebody, rebuking somebody for a sin is not unloving. By rebuking the person while you don't do it in the intent of restoration, it is sin. So you are more even sinful than the person you're rebuking because imitator of God is intentionally practicing compassion. Jonah did not do that. They said, Jonah, go tell to the city of Nineveh. He said, look at that. They should die. Amen? He, he had a desire to see them slapped, killed, dead. And the God of Israel tells him, go and speak to them. Why? Because he has an intent of turning them around. Imagine. God speaks to you to speak to somebody that you know, that you know, that you know you don't like. What do you do? You say, Lord, excuse me, eh, but send an angel. <laughs> what, what do you do? But if you are to become an imitator of God, you are to follow Christ, listen to his word, and practice compassion. The word of God says, when Jonah went to Nineveh, he expected to preach. And because he know they won't listen, he was glad. Because he said, at least I know that we not listen and there will be. Ay, ay, ay. Are you what I'm saying? So he knew the wrath was coming. So he was glad. That, okay, first I didn't want to go there. But now that the Lord is uh, kind of forcing me to go there, I'm going to go. But when I arrive, I know that we not listen anyway. So I will see their destruction. Repent ye all. When he finished, he, he was expecting to see the king say, continue what you're doing. Just let this madman. But suddenly, something happened. The king made a decree. Let everybody repent. He said, no, why do you repent? Ah, can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine? You are, you, are, you are intentionally expecting somebody to fail in repentance. Let them not repent so I can see the devotion. I would say that distraction of the Lord. But God is not that way. He's not telling to us to repent and then waiting for us not to repent so he can destroy us. Come on. God is not that way. He's why long suffering? He could have in short suffering. <laughs> because you have short, middle, and long. He could have been middle suffering. He could have been short suffering. Today, twice, four times, five times is good. But don't get on my nerve. Well, we all fall in that. 
Amen. I forgave you in 2001. I forgave you in 2009. I forgave you in 2017. By about um, 2023, you, 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 you get on my nerve. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't we do that? Why do we do that? Because we are not often reminded to become imitator of God. Get to somebody. Become imitator of God. There are some people in the government, when I see them, I wish I was Elijah. Send some fire. Let them burn up. For the Lord shall deal with the wicked. That's why God did not make me Elijah. <laughs> he knew that I would be misusing the fire. <laughs> so by the time I say, Fire! All I see is ice cream. <laughs> I say, Lord, I say, fire. <laughs> okay, though, so now, now I'm thinking if I say ice cream, then fire will come. So I say, ice cream. All I see is uh, ice <laughs> and cold water. And I'm thinking, which formula I have to use in order to make the actual fire come. So when I say, okay, fire ice cream ice, <laughs> I see fire, but that one is the what? The burning fire over the bush. If fire by doesn't consume. <laughs> I say, I say, Jesus, are you hearing what I'm saying? That's not the one I'm talking about. I, I look in the dictionary. What does fire mean? And I cry, all fire it doesn't come. But you see, God knows us. He, he knows us. The day he told us that uh, I gave you authority and power, he knew us. Becoming imitator. Bring me back the verse, please. And walk continually in love that is value one another. Practice empathy and compassion unselfishly seeking the best for others. You know, this phrase, unselfishly seeking the best for others, is not this one. You know, sometimes people, they say, what you have done to me, the Lord will bless you. Mm -mm, that's not the best. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are, you are cursing somebody. I say, Dieu va te bénir. Je dis, Dieu va te bénir. No, that's not, that's not God. I say, God will bless you. Mm -hmm. I, I say, God will bless you. The way you bless me, he will bless you. That's not God. See, the God who sinned by killing his brother and the one who sinned by hating his brother between the two, who goes to hell? Between the two, who is the baddest one? Are you what I'm saying? So Christ came to give us the balance to know that while you have not hurt your brother or your sister physically, you are murdering them spiritually in your thought, in your desires. And by doing so, you are as much as of a sinner like the one who physically sins. But here's the problem. We only value sin when it is manifested into the physical. I, I, when I say value, uh, um, my, my word is, I'm trying to say, we only realize it is considered that this is called sin. There you go. We realize this is called sin only when it is done in the physical. But the word of God does not tell us so. The word of God brings us to know that even the good you know to do. Even the good. You see somebody on the street 
And the Lord tells you give because I can tell you the devil does not tell you give. Can the devil tell you give? No. He's a stealer. I mean, <laughs> a thief. I said my word we go in the dictionary. He's a stealer. <laughs> Last time he was a weller. <laughs> He's a thief. But walk continually in love. Becoming imitator of God. Value one another. Practice empathy and compassion, unselfishly seeking the best for others, just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and sacrifice. Go verse 3, please. But sexual immorality and all moral impurity, indecent, offensive behavior, or greed must not even be hinted at among you, as is proper among saints, for as believers our way of life, whether in public or in private, reflects the validity of our faith. That's a long verse to just explain that if I am Christian or Christ-like, I'm not Christ-like only when I like it. When I like the situation, then I'm, then, you know, I'm acting like a Christian. When I don't like the situation, then I'm acting differently from that. No. As Christ-like is, I'm a like Christian, Christ-like mindset like Christ all the time. Why? Because his mind that flows in me must help me. But when you do fail, as the word of God says, if you do fail, you have who? And Amen. The advocate is not to advocate that, you know, he's not kind of like, no, understand, he, he you know, he failed. No, 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 He's an advocate to remind you that you are sent. Hallelujah. That you are stronger, that you are greater than the failure. So for us, having the intent of Christ in our mind, we do not hide to do things that are even shameful. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says, Speaking of what they do, it is even, huh? yeah, it is even a shame, there you go, to speak of them. Hallelujah. So we as children of God, we cannot give a reason to the enemy to speak against us. Christ spoken to a pastor. And he was reading, I believe, from the book of Romans, chapter 2. And he was speaking on how some unbeliever are blaspheming God because of the believers. And I start, I say, yeah. Because of the attitude and the behavior of believers, the unbelievers are blaspheming God. And I'm thinking, the Lord Jesus is saying, because of me and my attitude and my behavior, unbeliever continue to blaspheme him. That, that's, the, that's a big charge. You feel what I'm saying? That's a big charge. So I got to realize that, Lord, I do not want to be the reason. How do unbeliever continue to blaspheme? Because he's told in the book of her first, uh, I say uh, first, uh, John 17, he says, love each other. So that the world may know. Hallelujah. In another word, when we don't love each other, we give to the world the reason to know that it is not true. Does it make sense? So we become the reason why the world is blaspheming. So I got now to say, oh, I refuse to be the reason of the failure of the world. But when you don't see it that way, you would think I didn't do anything wrong. But the simple fact you fail to love each other as the Lord commanded us, you are the reason of why the world is hating him. Does it make sense? You will think that uh, it will be because you have uh, preached a uh, bad gospel or you have uh, been a false prophet. No, no, no. 
certain attitude and behavior. Listen, certain things concerning God is not what we have done. It's not our action. It's our way of being. The ways we are. You may not have done something in actions and don't think that there is anything you ought to have forgiveness for, but your ways are not pleasing. Are you what I'm saying? For this reason, when we take the word of God and then we screen the word of God and then we screen our lives in the mirror of the word of God, the only desire that can be with us is, Lord, I must be imitator of you. He ought to be a I must be. There is no other way but to just I must be. Here's the thing. If you start telling to yourself you were better then than you are now, then you know you haven't gotten anywhere. Because you cannot compare yourself to where you come from. You compare yourself to where you are supposed to go. Paul said, forgetting all things, I'm looking. Hallelujah. So if I know the goal is there, but I already ran for 100 miles, can I say I have done good? No. It is only the day when he say, look at me and say, good servant, then I know I have done good. So another word says, I need to continue until the finish line. So if he say, I say, well, you know, I have done so many things. I have helped the poor. I have helped the church. I have preached your word. I have done so. I have done so. I have done so. But today I'm just too tired. I just give up everything. I give up all. I just decided to go back to my old ways and I pray, Lord God, that you will have mercy on me. It won't work because if I decide to go back in my old ways, the Bible tells me that I am a mocker. Now, let's continue, please. Let, let there be no filthiness and silly talk, a course of sin, of vulgar joking. Because such things are not appropriate for believers, but instead speak of your thankfulness to God. That's the ways. For, go back, uh, uh, yeah. For be sure of this. No immoral, impure, or greedy person that for that one is in effect an idolater. Which one? The greedy one. Hallelujah. As any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God, for such a person places a higher value on something other than God. Now verse 6. Now after he has spoken of all those things in up to verse 5, he makes clear by saying this. Let no one deceive you with empty arguments. Well, there are many people who do use arguments. No, you know, you got to understand. The Lord knows. He understands. Yet yeah, he also knows and understands that he sacrificed a great price so that you be free from the power of sin so when the power of sin grabs you and somebody comes and says you know just you know well let me tell you something for us children of god our fruit as i said earlier of repentance is no longer just what we do is literally who we become i must become light because my thinking and my ways cannot be different based on where I am. Does it make sense? If I'm among the believers, I can, cannot be a believer. But when I'm by myself, I become like, like Ahab. I, 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 I don't know if you, you... I have to be one. 
One, even in the way I think, which is the best place for me to value or to um, uh, uh, judge, balance, if whether I am true to the Lord or no. Why? Because no one is able to see my thoughts. When I say no one, I'm talking about human being. So, if there is any place I should really take care of and pay attention, they are my. Because my ways and my action in the physical may not be filthy, but if my thoughts are filthy, I am as guilty as guilty before the Lord. So it tells us for this reason, we should not let anyone whosoever the person is, a pastor, a prophet, an evangelist, a deacon, a minister, a whatever that is, to deceive us with vain arguments. For because of those things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Is there a wrath of God? Yeah. But is this wrath of God intended to destroy us? Who wants to follow him? No. But this wrath of God, the Bible says, it is for the sons of disobedience. Meaning, there is already the wrath, and that wrath is already set. When you decide to go under that wrath, what happened? You get <laughs> yeah, you get it. Because the Lord is not seeking you to destroy you. But as a righteous God, he must judge. So the judgment that he has established, the sentence he has established, is only for those who do not follow his ways. In other words, for those who do not want to leave. The jail is not for everybody. They don't just take you to put you in jail. I mean, normally. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because in this world, <laughs> anything happened, right? But my point is, the meaning of a jail is supposed to be for law breakers, right? Law, like I'm trying to be, I would say that, terre a terre. Um, down to earth, amen? Even though we do understand that you can still value God, Love God, do the right things, and the enemy will take you in jail anyway, like Joseph. Hallelujah. But to be terre a terre, based to the earth, down to earth, is that the jail and the law is made, take for instance, the law of speeding. They said, okay, if you speed and then you go over this, you're going to get a ticket. The ticket is not for you. The ticket is for anyone who goes over this. The speed. So as you go and then you pass over the speed, the ticket now becomes for you. Are you know what I'm saying? But they did not make that ticket having your name in mind. It was not a, a personalized ticket created just because of you. Even though we don't know, we do know in the word of God that some people did make a law specifically. Because of one person, the book of Daniel. In this case, it's different. In this case, the word of God tells us that he has set a wrath for one person, the devil. And all his fallen angel. And now the devil, as we know, being mad, will seek us to also get the wrath. And then the... Huh? And then the word of God also tells us we are to seek him. See, he tells through Moses, I put before you, what? Life and death. And then he says what? Choose life and you shall live. What did they do? They chose death. And what happened? They died. So can God be the, the, the reason of your failure? No. So for us, we cannot leave vain words, vain arguments, or vain philosophy 
try to make us be comfortable in our wrong ways. No. Why? Because we do know that God says, if our value is word, he says, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. He didn't say upon the unbelievers. Sons of disobedience is also a person who goes out of the ways of God. Such like a, we call it about backsliding, right? If you backslide, you could become a son of disobedience. Because if you are in the ways of God and you decide to go out of the ways of God, I mean, come on, you are not still a son of obedience. Hallelujah. So becoming a son of disobedience is nothing else. First and foremost, that word explained of those who affront God, those who literally and continually seek to sin. But a son of disobedience is somebody who also practices that sin. There are Christians or children of God, those who were called by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who do continually practice sins, such as the people of, of Corinth. The Bible talks about that in the book of Corinthians. An entire book uh, uh, written, hallelujah, to address their behavior. Go further. Jesus Christ himself, he called the seven churches. And then he says there are churches who are acting and practicing as sons of disobedience. And yet there are children who were also saved by the word and by the Lord. Some as who? Simon the sorcerer, who was also saved. The word of God says he what changed, he received the word, received salvation, continues in the teaching of Philip, the evangelist, but yet his heart was what? Bound by the Gales of Satan. So, when Peter looked at him, Peter tells him when he tried to buy the Holy Ghost with money, Peter tells him that your money will perish with you. So, yes, the wrath of God is not intended for the saints, but the wrath of God will fall on anyone who's looking for it, who wants it. So, when he tells to the children of Israel, this is life, this is death. I want you, desire you to choose life so you live. It is intended to say, if you choose the contrary of the ways of God, you will also suffer the consequences. The devil, we have every reason to accuse God. If the people of God are doing some things like the devil without being straightened. Because he will tell him, you are not righteous. If I bring my son, you spank him. But when your son does the same thing, you don't spank him. So God is righteous. For this reason, we become imitators of Christ. Verse 7. So, do not participate or associate, even associate with them in the rebellious rebelliousness of sin for once you were darkness but now you are light in the lord walk as children of light what is for me to walk as child of light the verse 9 explain it to walk as child of light is not to sing it hallelujah is not to pray it the what as child of light it tells me is this verse 9 it is to have Goodness, righteousness, and truth. For the fruit, the effect, the result of the light, amen, consists. So the result, so as you walk as light, it means that I walk in the goodness of God. I walk in the righteousness of God. I walk in truth. So that's the definition of me walking in light. Now, some people can take a uh, lamp, <laughs> is what I'm saying, a torch, and then they walk with that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Or you can uh, have your Bible. You don't know what it is. The, uh, them days uh, when we go to, to evangelize, you have to take the big Bible. <laughs> the biggest one. And then you hold it like that. And then when you walk in the street to evangelize, they already know the Christian is coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. By the time the sinner sees you from afar, he takes another way. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that's how you value yourself. But hey, 
the word of God says, as for us to walk or to be light, the truth is, the definition of being light or walking in light is walking in the goodness of God or godliness, walking in righteousness and truth. If I walk in the goodness and righteousness and I don't walk in truth, do I walk in light? No. Because it's not all goodness or righteousness or truth. Let me put it this way. In the United States of America, they say there is a condition to become president. And that condition, not to become, uh, to be candidate to the presidency. And the candidate to the presidency, there are conditions. The condition is that you must be a citizen. Imagine that they say must be a citizen or a naturalized citizen. I feel something. I'm saying. They say what? You must be a citizen and naturally born in citizen. Uh, in the United States. So naturally acquired it. Because there are people who become citizen. But they are not naturally acquiring the citizenship. So if they say to be a candidate to the United States presidency, you must be a citizen or naturally born. Then anyone who has acquired a citizenship outside of the naturally can also be candidate. I see. If they say to be a candidate, you must be a citizen. Who is a citizen? Is anyone who has the citizenship. Hallelujah. But the condition is not or, but is and. So if you are the one without the other, can you be? No. So you cannot be in light, walking in light, if you have the one without the other. Does it make sense? So goodness and righteousness and truth equals light. So when I walk in light, I walk in the goodness of God. When I walk in light, I walk in the righteousness of God. When I walk in light, I walk in the truth of God. All of them together, bound together, makes me walk in light. So when I do truthfully practice truth and righteousness without goodness, I still fail. When I truthfully practice righteousness and good that without truth, I still fail. But since I know as a person filled and bound to my flesh, amen, that flesh is our house. And that flesh is bound to sin. That flesh did not get saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. The day you got that salvation from the Lord Jesus, your flesh was not in the contract. That's why we willfully do what? Subject, subdue our flesh so that our flesh do not drain us into the contrary of the will of God. Let's go. Verse 10, trying to learn by experience what is pleasing to the Lord and letting your lifestyle be example of what is most acceptable to him. Your behavior expressing gratitude to God for your salvation. Verse 11, do not participate in the worthless, of and, the worthless and unproductive deeds of darkness, but instead expose them by exemplifying personal integrity, moral courage, and godly character. If you don't do that, now you become as book, uh, book of Romans chapter 2. Let's take it. Book of Romans chapter 2. The book of Romans chapter 2. Uh, we're going to read from verse 1. 
Yes, go ahead. New, new, no, no, King James Version, please. Therefore, therefore, thou art inexcusable, mm -hmm. O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. Huh. For Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judge, judgest, for wherein thou judgest your, thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same things. things. Hallelujah. When you say, look at this liar, but you lie. Well, the word of God says, you are condemning who? That's a big deal. I don't know if you get it. It's one thing to be judged. It's another thing to be condemned. Once you do so, you put yourself under the wrath of the sons of disobedience. Give me in in a compressor. Amplify. Therefore, you have no excuse or justification. Therefore, you have no excuse or justification. We do know that we are justified by faith. faith. The blood of Christ. Amen? But that blood of Christ will no longer justify us when we are doing what? We are, it says, every one of, of you. Who, who are now, he's talking about who? Everyone. When he says everyone, he's talking about who? When he says every one of you, who is he talking about? The people. No. 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 He's talking about who right here? He's talking about the church. Christ did not tell you, you cannot judge. Christ told you, you cannot judge while you still have a beam. How can a blind man say, let me show you the way? How, how do you do that? It's just impossible. So the word of God make it clear by saying, let's for instance, there is a, a man of God who died now. His name was Paul Cain. Sometimes they say Cain, like Cain and stuff like that. But if you read the word, it's Cain, like uh, the one in the Bible, the one who killed. <laughs> That's what they try. It's like a, a movie we watch, and the guy was, 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 was called Mr. Deville. You remember? Mr. Deville. But, you know, it sounds like it's not devil, but it's devil. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just Red Deville. Anyway. The guy was called Paul Cain. And he was a false, fearful, great prophet. Gratefully used. And for many years, he is born somewhere in the 40s or 30s. For many years, he has been great, usually used, accurate prophet. And he was an homosexual. Now you ask yourself, how? But in the same time, he was bashing the people who were doing homosexuality. Are you what I'm saying? And then, one time, he finally got confronted. And he has been dealing with that sin for 35 years of ministry. Can you imagine? <laughs> 35 years of ministry. So, they confronted him, and he finally admitted that he was indeed struggling with homosexuality. And then the people decided to separate from him. When they separated from him, he went online and said, well, he never been, he has never done so. Now, now you're thinking, 
Somebody who has been caught in sin now act like he did nothing. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So they, they saw, okay, since you don't want to recognize that you are truthfully, they separated from him. Meanwhile, the people he has led and misled, for, for, sorry, he has made them believe that it was just a mounted charge against him. Where at it was true that he was improper. So for many years, he kept on deceiving the people. But all this reason was for what? Reputation. Hallelujah. Reputation can make the children of God to do things which are contrary to the will of God. He ended up finally to admit and then he died not long after. Here's the point. For such a person, at the time where he was committing whatever he was committing, was he under the wrath of God or not? He was. Because the Bible says the wrath that is for the son of disobedience. So disobedience in this case is literally continually walking in sin. So he 35 years continually ate the fruit of sin. That's no wonder that they come to the Lord Jesus and they say, but we have prophesied in your name. Here's the thing. The Lord Jesus recognized that they truly prophesied. Because he did not rebuke them for being false prophet. He rebuked them for being iniquity. Workers of iniquities. Hallelujah. He didn't rebuke them because they were not truly using the name of God. He didn't disavow them because they were not truly preaching Jesus. But here's the thing. The Bible tells us that there are some who preach to the Lord for, for what? Selfish gain or jealousy. But what the word of God says, the word of God says, but regardless, Christ is preached. So imagine the people who got saved through Judas. Because some people got saved through Judas. And Paul, we put it this way. That's the reason why I subdue myself being an imitator of God. Lest after I have preached to others, I be myself disqualified. We talked earlier about the virgins, right? Which is a very valid truth that show us that indeed we can be separated and yet fail to enter. He says, separate thyself from among them. So you do so. But you got to keep his light. You got to keep his flame. You got to keep the oil. And then as we say, you have to set your time on heaven. So that you are continually seeking to please him. You are continually seeking to please him. Will you have time where you fail? Yeah. But what does the world God says? We do have an advocate. Not that you will continually fail. If I am your advocate or your lawyer, and you continually steal, even if you give me good money, brother, I'm tired. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Because the day I come with you and before you, I say before you, I come with you before the judge. By the time the judge see me, you, you again. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Because of your attitude, you will put in jeopardy my license. So we know. That Christ is died is uh, uh, is dead died for our sins. We know that we ought to become imitator of God, but we also know that we should not let vain talk deceive us. Such as oh don't you know don't worry God knows e -e even God you know nowadays anybody has God in their mouth. 
and they can they can tell you that God say what He didn't say. No, God is not like that. You know, who told you God is not like that? <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. God, we, we will not judge you for this one. I mean, this, this is. But how do you know the intent of God? The word. So when I look at the word of God and I see that I, I'm outside of his will, that word, which is my light, makes me walk in truth. Let's finish. Can you put uh, the last verse? Hallelujah. The word of God makes me walk in truth. Therefore, you have no excuse or justification. Every one of you who hypocri hypocritically judges and condemns others for in passing judgment on another person, you condemn yourself because you who judge from a position of arrogance and self-righteousness are habitually practicing the very same things which you denounce. Verse 2. And we know that the judgment of God falls justly and in accordance with truth on those who practice such things. Continue. But do you think this, O oh man, when you judge and condemn those who practice such things and yet do the same yourself, that you will escape God's judgment and elude his verdict? Or do you have no regard for the wealth of his kindness and tolerance and patience in withholding his wrath? Are you actually unaware or ignorant of the fact that God's kindness leads you to repentance? Hallelujah. That is to change your inner self, your whole way of thinking, seek his purpose for your life. But because of your callous stubbornness and unrepentant heart, you are deliberately storing up. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Lord God. You are deliberately storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath when God's righteous, righteous judgment will be revealed. Hallelujah. He will... Pay back to each person according to his deeds, justly as his deeds deserve. Now, here's the thing. You do this, you do this, you do this, you do this, which are outside of the will of God. And nothing happened to you. But the Bible says that you are, not, you are not realizing that you are, you are packing. <laughs> you are saving. <laughs> are you know what I'm saying? You are saving on it. Because the day it comes... That day, you're gone. So we want to be imitators of God as children of light, knowing that he's good towards us. And he says, the goodness of God make us run to repent. Change our lifestyle. Change our thought. Change our heart. When I see the goodness of God, when I see the grace of God, my heart trembles. Somebody who is not a thief, if you find something that is not of him and steal, his heart will not be in peace. You see what I'm saying? Because that's not him. And then the second that happened, the second thing that happened, that person will work everywhere possible, either to return the money or to never touch stealing, uh, come on, to never steal again. That's the spirit in you that is causing you to be, how do I call it? Grieved. Thank you for the word. You are grieved. You see that, ah. And then you fall and run, um, enter into his grace. Shall we pray? Father, bless your name, Lord. 
Thank you. For you say that we ought to become imitators. Become imitators of you. We are seeking to please you. We are seeking to walk with you. We are seeking to walk like you. Without you, we can absolutely do nothing. But we also know with you, we can do all things through you, Christ, who strengthens us. The day of judgment is not meant for us. Therefore, Lord God, as we value and consider your love, as we value and consider your grace, as we value and consider your sacrifice, we're asking and we say today, we are being renewed by your goodness, by your righteousness, and by your truth. So I be not called a son of disobedient, but I be called a son of God. I be not called, Lord God, a son of perdition, but I be called an imitator of God, so that my ways becomes not a reason for which the sons of the world, for which the those who have unbelief in their heart continue to blaspheme God, continue to blaspheme your name, that I will not be a partaker in the reason for and why the church is being blasphemed at, that your name is being blasphemed at in the church, but I will become, Lord God, a partaker in things that makes you absolutely pleased. I pray let this life that I live this life that I have be a reminder that you live in me that you live in me my actions my ways my behavior my character my heart, my thoughts. I subdue them in your goodness. I subdue them in your righteousness. I subdue them in your truth. For I will live and not die. For I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, even as I walk to my ways in heaven. For those of you who don't know the Lord, whether you're watching now or after, that the love of Christ has not yet, that the love of Christ has not yet come into your heart so you understand the length, the depth, the size of that love. He said that his goodness is to bring us to repentance so that we become, so that we be imitator of Christ. When the word of God penetrates your heart, no one has to tell you repent. That word that you hear is that word that breaks your heart and that calls you to tell Lord, I am a sinner. To tell Lord, I recognize my way are wrong. To tell Lord, I recognize you are the only way by which I can be saved and redeemed. To recognize that I must need to walk as the Lord wants me to walk. When the word of God penetrates your heart, you judge yourself through the mirror of the word and you look at the word and you say, Lord, I am not what your word says. Therefore, I pray to become and you work in the newness of life. For it says, you know the word which is his truth and that truth that you know sets you free and that truth and that freedom becomes for you the path of light in the goodness, the righteousness, and the truth of God. 
I pray you become imitator in your mind, in your devotion, in your time, personal time. I pray you become imitator of what he has done and how he worked in this earth. I pray that you will not let vain deceit, vain words deceive you, but that you will hold on to the only truth that is Christ Jesus. The word tells us we were once partaker of darkness and no more as we are in light we out now to walk in that light i pray that you continually walk in the light of christ now and forevermore in the name of jesus christ amen amen <laughs>